So I've recently finished some two new projects that I want to present to you. But first, I want to talk about their subject, which is this image you're seeing right here. And the quote, this is a frame from the show Bad Men. And the quote there is in the subtitles, I'm so many people. And I just want to talk about why that's meaningful to me, why I chose to make some art out of it. This is Sally Draper. Um, she's the main character, Don Draper's daughter. And we sort of see her come of age throughout the show. And this is a scene between her and her father, Don. They're in a diner talking. Very powerful scene. One of those scenes that kind of ties the whole, maybe not the whole series, but maybe his whole character. Sally develops a lot like Don as she grows up. The show kind of uses her development to say things about Don's development and sometimes to force Don to introspect about himself because he sees her becoming like him. The show is a lot about identity. It's about ad men, guys who make advertisements. That's Don's job. So it's about presenting an image to the public that's, you know, not authentic, not the real thing underneath. And then also doing that so much that you forget what's underneath. So that's Don's character. It's his job as an ad man, but it's also his character. And it starts to become Sally's character as she learns how to manipulate people socially and, you know, not to the degree that Don does, but she's learning that and she's becoming like that. In this episode, they've lied to each other. <laughs> they both have a lie. And um, Don has just come clean about his, which is weird because he's usually the one who keeps lying and lies very expertly and is very convincing. And this is why no one really knows him and which he suffers from. By sort of random circumstances, Sally catches him in a lie and she's upset and he's not going to get anywhere except for coming clean. So he comes clean completely, which is kind of rare in the show. And it's like very cathartic and everything in this scene, immediately following his thing, she comes clean and says her thing. And her thing happens to be like, she went to her friend's mom's funeral in the city, but then she only went so she could skip out and go shopping with her other friends. She tells him that she volunteers it, which is another beautiful moment because before that there's a real loss of trust between them. You know, she says, I only went so I could go shopping. And he looks at her and he says, I'm sure that's not true. And she says, well, I don't know, whatever. And then she looks like down to herself, like in this image. And she says, I'm so many people like she says to herself, like she's realizing. And it's, you get a sense that there is a part of her that wanted to do the right thing and go to her friend's mom's funeral. But obviously there's a part that wanted to be cool and go shopping with her cool friends. Right. So that's, that's what the sh episode is putting together for you. And it's, it's what's going through her head when she says this. And then immediately after that, the camera goes to Don and he's having like a, a big realization because that's exactly his, conflict and identity is that he's many people and it's um, hard to make sense of that. And it's hard to be known and feel known with all of that going on. So, so yeah, this quote always stuck with me and even, even pulled out of context a little bit because it, it's not just when you're lying and deceiving that you're many people, but there's, there's many different values you can hold and it sort of feels like like even if you don't tell lies about it right there's a part of her that wants to be a good friend to the with the funeral thing and there's a part of her that wants to take advantage of an opportunity all of that having different values is like having different selves sometimes because they sometimes come in conflict with each other and i just love that framing of being many different people to me it often makes more sense than saying I'm a single self with conflicting desires. For years, I would find myself just occasionally thinking that in my head in different situations. And then I thought, if this is, if this keeps popping up in my head, you know, I, I, I clearly care about it. I clearly think there's something beautiful about it. So I might as well just take this moment and sort of celebrate it by putting my own little spin on it and making it into something that I would want to see and, and show other people. So that's what you're about to see. 
So I'm going to show you here how I uh, took this, took the reference image and manipulated it in certain ways to make it ready for the digital render that I did of this, which is one of the projects and the other is a painting. I took a screenshot right from um, the player on my computer without the subtitles because I wanted to add the text in my own way. So this is just the screenshot. And pick, by the way, picking the frame, the exact frame was tricky because her face is changing so much and it's such a subtle facial expression that I wanted to freeze it on. This is the one I wanted. It's like intense concentration. It's introspection. Very tricky because, uh, you know, a split second before that, it looks too passive. A split second after that, it looks too intense. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, this is exactly what I wanted. I feel like it's a good balance of also very hard to paint, but we'll get to that later. But a good uh, balance of like, I guess, many different things. I used AI to make the frame bigger, right? Because of what I want to do with this. First of all, I wanted her in the center of the frame. Most of the background is going to be dark, but I wanted it to still be balanced with some content equally on either side and also more content upwards because there will be more above it as well. And it's not perfect. You can see, you can see a seam line here where the AI generation starts. For some reason, it seems a little brighter. The top is not bad, but anyway, I used Dolly for this basically just going in patches, generate up in this direction, generate up in that direction. And it's good enough, you know? Okay. And then adding the text was just, this is the text from Mad Men. Like when it's, you know, Mad Men, the logo and everything. I found that online. I used that text. I wanted to have it tilted a little bit playful and bigger, right? Not just like little puny subtitle text, but very prominent. And, um, it's aligned with the couch she's sitting by. So there's some coherence there. Oh, and also I isolated her, her character basically. And I just made it brighter. She's sort of popping out of the photo more here. And I guess I added a vignette. You can see the edges are dark. So this is, this is the element, this image that I'm working with in the digital render composition that I make, which you'll see next. So now things get a bit more complicated. This is an effect that I applied to that image. What it's doing here is it takes the red and green and blue channels of color from the image and it splits them and copies them and moves them around. So in a digital image, each pixel has a value of, it has an amount of redness in its color and blue and green that if you laid all three channels on top of each other, actually add them together, you would get the original colors. So where there's more red in the image, the red channel is brighter. So what I did here was I split them. There's all three in the middle, red, green, and blue, but they're shifted around a little bit and that's why it looks blurry, right? And there's a green hanging off and there's red hanging off on the other side. And then I also copied the red again and just moved it over and the green and moved it the other way. From the beginning, I had this sort of idea that I wanted to do something like this to the image. So now bring up uh, Blender where I'm doing this image editing, playing more with this effect. Um, and this is, I instead used an image of the moon. Originally, it's just a white moon. Makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing because it's simple, just white circle. You can see the effect better. So here we're taking just the green, right? Presenting it as green copying it. It's, it's copied once, shifted a tiny bit, and then copied again, again, again. And each copy gets a little bit darker. And that's going to be important later because we're going to have them intersect at different points. I did something similar with the red channel, but it's going the other way. And then the blue channel is going up. And I lined these up so that where the channel ends is another node where the other channels are starting or, or might be ending. <laughs> so it's almost like a grid. So if we were to layer two of them together, you'll see that together the red and blue with full strength are almost lined up. And that's why we have magenta. And here we have a weak red 
on this side and a strong blue because the blue is starting there and fading up, right? And so they're combining in different amounts. And also they're not combining perfectly. I made it so they don't line up perfectly. They're shifted a little bit. So your, your mind has to still do some work to sort of put them together with the green on top of that. And you'll see the green fills in the rest of the space and completes the like different combinations of strengths of intersections. So now we have almost white in the middle. Well, actually it is white in certain places, but you can see they're not fully layered on top of each other. Actually, can I show you better if I zoom? They're not completely perfectly layered on top of each other. Not only are they not lined up perfectly, but some of the channels are diminished and some are at full strength. That's why this moon looks a little magenta and this one looks a little yellow and this one looks a little cyan, although yeah, you can kind of see it. And then in between we have just single colors sort of in the void on their own. So I've got this effect. Now, if I apply the original image to it, and this is my image, right? Instead of the moon, we just plug in this image with all its rich, different colors. And okay. So this looks crazy. First of all, there's so much text. It's really, it's distracting from her face. And also because the background is so bright, remember there's supposed to be little isolated reds and greens and blues in between the places where the nodes intersect. So you don't see those because the background is just bright. Instead, when we have those color trails where it starts strong and then fades a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, the first two will be the original image with the background and the text. And the rest is just her head and it's brighter. So we make the background darker, we make her head brighter. And then if you look, we've got like a background here, but this, here's a green image, right? Here's a green face image. Their backgrounds don't transfer over. Just, those are just her face. This is what I wanted it to look like because the way that they partially intersect and partially form substantial images, but never quite the perfect image. That's how I feel like this I'm so many people theme. If you think about that sort of psychology, it's not so much that there are whole people, right? Complete people inside your mind. It's more like little threads of little clusters, maybe of desires and thoughts that, that clump together into like patterns of thought and some are more fleshed out than others. And so it's like when they combine in certain ways, they form what feels like a whole self with its own intentions and everything. And sometimes they combine in, in a weak way or an unstable way. And it only feels, um, in control for like a brief moment or something. So that's what I'm trying to give the sense of here. What I also like about it is that the, the longer you look, the more you see, like if you zoom in just into the middle here, you see, there's the blue one coming up. There's actually another one here, even harder to see. <laughs> and, um, there's more like that. Uh, so there you have it. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about just the whole theory behind it and why I made it look this way.